All right, let's show on the morning commute. I know it's surprising, but yeah, it's raining again. Welcome back to the Covey Chase Farm Blog. It is March 10th and we have a beautiful day today, although it has been raining in the early part of the week. And believe it or not, I think Friday night, tomorrow night, they're calling for three to six inches of snow and getting down to 12 degrees out. You see in the corral, I have an empty corral. I have all the calves bought. We've got 55 calves out on pasture right now or in the bale grazing area. So I'm pretty happy about that. Here are most of the calves out in what I would kind of call the loafing area. It's just some, about two, two and a half acres up on a hillside. Helps them to get out of the mud of where all the bales are. I'm gonna move the fence and tighten them up a bit. I wanna go ahead and get them off this now that the grass has started to grow. I'm gonna get them up closer to the bale grazing area. There's my little buddy, number 84. Somebody asked if I'd name them. I don't name them. They look like T-bones to me. Prior to, prior to putting these halves and start grazing them here in a few weeks, I will run them through the corral. I'll get a good weight on them. They will all have an orange ear tag. I'll have it all written down. I keep pretty good records of their weight as they grow to see how they're performing. When you rotationally graze, particularly as many paddocks as I'm doing, water is always, water and fencing, but for me right now, water is always the most problematic issue that I face. I do bring all of the water for the farm. It comes out of this pond here. The pond is gets fenced in, no livestock are allowed in it. I use a little pump here and two inch discharge hose that stretches out. And you have about 600 foot of hose. And then I fill tanks. That's the problem, filling tanks on a wagon and then hauling the water. So I've been really looking for uh, improvements in my water situation. Here's one of my first improvements. I found the connectors at Lowe's that I needed in order to put my lay flat hose up to a permanently installed PVC pipe right in front of the water tank. That way I don't have to ride up, start the generator or start the water pump, ride up, hold the hose, fill up the water tank, and then right back. Quick update on the chicken brooder. The 150 baby chicks come next Thursday. Here's a completed brooder. You see I've got the electric wired in here. I'll run with extension cords. I can turn off all the lights, the four lights, flip them back on. Um, I've added a tarp to the top to hold the heat in. I just turned the lights on. And if you can see this, the temperature right now inside is 51 degrees. It needs to be warmer than that. That's too cold. So I think when my lights are running and it's heated up, I can maintain about 75. Here's what it looks like on the inside. You see, I have the pipe shavings down. I have four lights in. Under the lights, trying to maintain about 95 degrees when they first get here and then drop that down every week. We do have all the waterers and the feeders actually letting them sit out in the sun right now. I cleaned them out with Clorox, make sure it's healed any kind of germs or anything that was on them. So right now I'm just waiting. I think we're ready. Our high school team, my, both my boys play for the high school basketball team. We've won our region and will now go play in the Sweet 16 at Rupp Arena. But when you live in a small, rural community like we do, 
Here's what it looks like when your high school wins the regional championship. The senior working on Travis. Dribbles around him. Gets to the rim. Pump fake. Shot up. Misses it. Battle for the rebound. Lost the head with his shot. I love these little farm towns. So I've been running the lights now for a couple, three hours. Here's where the temperature is. I don't think we've talked much about this field that I'm in right here. This is up. It is a field beside the corral. It's one where I've been doing a lot of clearing. You see a brush pile right there. But if you look out through here, we did a closer look in a second, but I've got trees down. This whole field was full of locusts. Many years ago, probably about, I don't know, 15 to 18 years ago, I came in here and seeded this with warm season grasses. That includes uh, big and little blue stem, Indian grass, kind grass, stuff that you would predominantly see a bit in the Midwest, although it used to be prevalent around the US uh, decades ago grow primarily starting in early June, July, uh, even in August if you get rainfall. Unlike the cold season grasses, which are your Kentucky bluegrass, fescue, orchard grass, those grasses will start growing now. So here's an example of the trees that are down. This seems to be every tree on our farm. Thorns. That doesn't feel real good. Right now I'm looking, anything that I see that has a pretty long, straight, and thick bottom, I would try to save for fence posts. Right here's, right here's some that look like they would make some good posts. Just like that, we got the field done. Extremely excited to have that project over. That was the better part of the day, getting all that loaded up. Well, thank you very much for watching the farm blog this week. Greatly appreciate it. If you haven't visited the website, make sure you hit up www.chubbychasefarm.com. Next week, you will see baby chicks for the first time. They're supposed to be shipping, hatching and shipping on Wednesday. Should receive them on Thursday. So excited about that. It was a great week here on the farm. Weather was really good after we got out of the first part of the week. Got a lot of projects done. Got the brooder all set up. We're ready for the chicks. You saw the field behind me. We've gotten it all cleaned up. Most importantly, I've got all my soccer calves out on pasture. So I hope everyone had a blessed week. Have a great weekend, and we will see you next week.